Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear students. This is a video of the subject of education for the course of bachelors in education and the paper which is being covered is child development and learning. This video is from the major topic of intelligence and this lecture is going to cover the theories of intelligence. This video is recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter or subject matter expert for this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. And the academic expert or reviewer for this video is Professor Jaseem Ahmed from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha channels of MHRD, New Delhi. Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at IASC Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today we are going to take up the next topic of the major topic of intelligence, which is the theories of intelligence. So before going ahead and learn about the different theories of intelligence, First of all, let us see what exactly we mean by intelligence. So being intelligent actually is a kind of positive feeling which encourages self-esteem and a sense of worth. Yet, what is intelligent and what is smart is a very big question. This has been the focus of different theories, definitions and philosophies from olden times. So there are different theories about intelligence, but none of which agree with each other. So every approach to thinking comes up with its own different perspective and assumption, often contradicting at least one earlier theory. So in today's discussion, we will try to discuss few of the very popular theories of intelligence. So broadly, we can make a classification of theories of intelligence into two types. So what are those two types? The first one is the factor theories and the second classification can be the cognitive theories. So under the factor theories, we are going to discuss in brief about the unitary theory, then the anarchic theory or multi-factor theory, then Spearman's two-factor theory, then there is Thurston's group factor theory, then Thomson's sampling theory. Vernon's hierarchical theory, Guilford's theory involving the model of intellect. So these will be discussed in brief under the category of factor theories. And under the category of cognitive theories, we will be discussing in brief about the Cattles and Horn's theory of intelligence, then Sternberg's theory of information processing, and Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. So we will just go ahead and see that what exactly all these theories are all about. The first theory which we are going to discuss here is the one factor or unifactor theory. It reduces all abilities to a single capacity of general intelligence or common sense. This would imply that they are all perfectly correlated and would make no allowance for the unevenness of people. That is the abilities along different lines. Since it goes against the common observation that an individual does possess different levels of different abilities and does not shine equally in all directions. So it has no ground to stand and it stands rejected. So this uh, theory, which is the first theory which we have discussed, we have seen that because of the, uh, the, the, those aspects which are not in consonance with the uh, in general intelligence or common sense theory, we make it 
stand rejected. So now let us see the next theory, which is the anarchic theory or multi-factor theory, which was given by E. L. Thorndike. Thorndike believed that there was nothing like general ability. Each mental activity requires an aggregate of different set of abilities. This theory considers intelligence a combination of numerous separate elements or factors, each one being a minute element of an ability. Then we have got the next theory because uh, E. L. Thorndike's theory was also not regarded as the best theory. It was also criticized and it was not uh, even uh, selected by most of those people. So then came the Spearman's two-factor theory. It was developed in 1904 by an English psychologist named Charles Spearman who proposed that intellectual abilities were comprised of two factors. First one is the general ability or common ability which he denoted as the G factor and the other a group of specific abilities known as the S factor. So G factor is universal inborn ability. Greater G in an individual leads to greater success in life. S factor is acquired from the environment. It varies from activity to activity in the same individual. This theory was criticized on many grounds and it, it was also not acceptable on so many grounds. Then came the next theory which is Thurston's theory. Thurston's theory is also known as the primary mental abilities or group factor theory. It states that intelligent activities are not an expression of innumerable highly specific factors, nor is the expression primarily of a general factor that pervades all mental activities. It is the essence of intelligence. Certain mental operations have in common a primary factor that gives them psychological and functional unity and that differentiates them from other mental operations. These mental operations then constitute a group. A second group of mental operation has its own unifying primary factor and so on. So in we can say that in other words there are a number of groups of mental abilities each of which has its own primary factor giving the group a functional unity or cohesiveness. Each of these primary factors is said to be relatively independent of the other. So there are a number of groups of mental abilities, each of which has its own primary factor. Thurston and his associates have differentiated nine different factors. We are just going to discuss all these nine factors. So the first factor is the verbal factor or V, which is concerned with comprehension of verbal relations, words and ideas. Then the next one is spatial factor or S. It is involved in any task in which the subject manipulates an object imaginatively in space. Then the third factor, which is numerical factor or N. It is an ability to do numerical calculations rapidly and accurately. Then the fourth factor is the memory factor or M, which is involved in the ability to memorize quickly. Then we have got the fifth factor, which is word fluency factor or W. It is involved whenever the subject is asked to think of the isolated words at a rapid rate. Then the sixth factor is inductive reasoning factor or RI. This is an ability to generalize through specific examples. Then the next factor is deductive reasoning factor or RD. This is an ability to make use of generalized result. Then the eighth factor is perceptual factor or P. This is an ability to perceive objects accurately. Then the ninth factor is problem solving ability factor or PS. This is an ability to solve problems independently. 
So the weakest link in the group factor theory was that, that in this theory, it discarded the concept of common factor. It did not take Thurston very long to realize his mistake and to reveal a general factor in addition to group factors. So in this way, Thurston himself did a kind of criticism of his theory. Now we come. Now let us see the next theory, which is Thomson's sampling theory. This theory was given by G. H. Thomson in 1939. Thomson was a British psychologist. This theory assumes that the mind is made up of several independent bonds or elements. Any specific test or school activity samples some of these bonds. It is possible that two or more tests sample and utilize the same bonds and a general common factor can be said to exist among them. It is also possible that some other tests sample different bonds, in which case the tests have nothing in common and each of them is specific. So the th sampling theory combines several uh, theoretical viewpoints uh, and it appears to be similar to Thorndike's multi-factor theory, except that uh, he con uh, conceded to the practical usefulness of a concept like G. And at the same time, Thomson's theory seems to maintain that the concept of a group factor, capital G, is of equal practical usefulness. So this was the theory of Thomson, and which is also com commonly called as the sampling theory. Now let us see the next theory. The next theory here is Vernon's hierarchical theory. Uh, Vernon or P.F. Vernon in 1950 gave this theory. P.F. Vernon was British psychologist and he suggested a hierarchical structure for the organization of intelligence, uh, which we are going to just uh, take up here. So Vernon description of different uh, levels of uh, intelligence uh, may fill the gaps between two extreme theories. The two-factor theory of Spearman, which did not allow for the existence of group factors, and the multiple-factor theory of Thurston, which did not allow a G-factor. Intelligence can be described as comprising abilities at varying levels of generality. The first one is the highest level or small g, which is actually the general intelligence factor. This is the factor with the largest source of variance between individuals. And this was given by Spearman. So the next one is, the next level is the major group factors such as verbal, numerical, then educational, or which, which he gave VED. He, he denoted as VED. And practical, mechanical, spatial, physical, which he denoted as KM, uh, all these abilities. So the next level is minor group factors, which are divided from major group factors. Then the fourth level is the bottom level, which is S, small s or specific factor, which is again uh, a term which was given by Spearman. The next theory here in this presentation will be Guilford's model of structure of intellect. Guilford proposed a three-dimensional structure of intellect model. According to Guilford, every intellectual task can be classified according to its content, mental operation involved in it, and the product resulting from the operation. So these were the three different uh, aspects or different tasks which were broadly classified by Guilford. He further classified content into the first component which is content into five different categories which were visual, auditory, symbolic, semantic and behavioral. Then he classified the next component, the second component uh, which was uh, operations into five categories again which were named as cognition, memory, divergent production, convergent production, and evaluation. Then the last one, the third uh, category, he classified, uh, which was uh, the category of products, into six categories, 
which were named as units, classes, relations, systems, transformations, and implications. So in this way, in the model which was given by Guilford, uh, the model of intellect, it is having around 150 factors. So now we just have to come on the conclusion about the factors theory of intelligence. So we have seen here a uh, few of the theories of intelligence uh, which were actually based on the uh, factors component or factors theory. So in terms of the constituents or factors, all these theories were prepared or based. So these theories exhibit wide variations in terms of the number of factors that they consider important. The range of all such factors also vary from unitary theory to like in the unitary theory, we have seen that there was just one factor or a single factor to 150 factors as we have seen in the Guilford's intellect model. So we have seen that uh, for understanding what goes on inside one's intelligence, we must try to build an elective view by incorporating the essence of all the workable theories of intelligence. Consequently, any uh, intellectual activity or mental task may be said to involve the following three kinds of basic factors. We are just going to discuss those. So uh, these factors uh, which, we can, uh, which we can enumerate are arranged in the order as suggested by Vernon or in the form of models as suggested by Guilford. So the first one uh, which was suggested by these people were the general factor or G which is involved in common or all the tasks. Then the next factor was the specific factor which is or which can be denoted as small s which is related to small s at, and few of the times they also denote it with capital S. It is related with the specific uh, type of tasks. Then the group factor. The group factor which is denoted by capital G. It is the common to the task belonging to a specific group. So this was all about the uh, factors theory of intelligence. Now let us go ahead and see the next category. The next category is the cognitive theories of intelligence. So apart from the, uh, or the theories of intelligence which uh, actually are grouped under the factor theory of intelligence, different psychologists have also propagated a number of theories explaining the mechanism of human intellect grouped as cognitive theories of intelligence. So we are just going to present a few of those theories uh, and a uh, uh, few of them will be discussed and there is a theory of Harvard Gardner uh, which is in this category which we are going to discuss in detail in a separate lecture. So we are going to discuss uh, in this lecture the theory of cattle and horn, then the Sternberg's information processing theory and also in brief Harvard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence. So the first theory which is to be discussed is cattle and horns fluid and crystallized theory. The fluid aspect of this theory says that intelligence is a basic capacity due to genetic potentiality while this is affected by the past and new experiences. The crystallized theory is a capacity resultant of experiences, learning and environment. Then the next theory in this uh, cognitive theories category is the Sternberg's triarchic theory or information processing theory of intelligence. So Robert Sternberg in 1985 has uh, constructed a three-pronged or triarchic theory of intelligence. Robert Sternberg was basically a psychologist. So the three types are, so uh, when this triarchic theory of intelligence was given by him, he has, he said that there are, there are uh, the, the construction of the intelligence comprises of three types. 
and what are those three types they are analytical intelligence creative intelligence and practical intelligence let us see what are those terms uh, the those terms mean so the first one is analytical intelligence analytical intelligence is what we generally think of as academic ability it enables us to solve problems and to acquire new knowledge problem solving skill include encoding information or combining and comparing pieces of information and generating a solution the next one is creative intelligence creative intelligence is defined by the abilities to cope with novel situations and to profit from experience the ability to quickly relate novel situations to familiar situations which means to perceive similarities and differences to foster adaptations uh, we can say that as a result of experience we also become able to solve different problems in a more rapid way so this is the creative intelligence then we have got the practical intelligence what is this practical intelligence can be a type of intelligence which can be seen in the, all those street smart people those people who are uh, called as more practical people in our general life so this uh, this particular type of intelligence enable people to adapt to the demands of their environment in doing day to day work so uh, just for example suppose uh, if a person is asked by the employer some of those tasks which this person is not able to do so the first perspective of this person can be he can uh, he can make a change in the employer's attitude so that uh, this this job becomes proper or you can say easy going for him so this is the first perspective to change the attitude of the employer which is somehow difficult but the second alternative environment can be this person if his this job is not suiting to him he can find a more suitable job so this is something where a person is adaptive about uh, getting a job or pursuing a job so in this way we can say that a person is less practical or more practical so these were the three types of uh, intelligences which were given in the triarchy theory or information processing theory of intelligence by sternberg now because uh, we have seen that this theory is also named as the information processing theory of intelligence so uh, we will just see that what are uh, all those components so he also added that each component is a basic unit of information processing and the task for information processing has different major steps which were actually the part of this uh, particular triarchy theory itself so what are those uh, different major steps which were involved in the information processing the first step was encoding what is encoding identifying the relevant available information in the mind then the next step was inferring what is inferring drawing the necessary inference then the next step is mapping which means establishing the relationship between a previous situation and the present one then the next step is application what is this applying the inferred relationship then we have got justification justification is to justify or making a justification or to make the justification and analyzing the solution of the problem then the next step is response what is response response is basically providing the best possible solution so this was all about the uh, this theory of information processing now the next theory is gardner's theory of multiple intelligences i have earlier also mentioned that this theory is uh, detailed in an, another lecture and all those uh, things which are uh, mentioned by harvard gardner 
is detailed in that lecture very properly but we will just go ahead and see that what exactly is given in this theory in very much brief so harvard gardner, gardner uh, in his book frames of mind the theory of multiple intelligences in the year 1983 uh, he has given this particular theory he has put forth a new and different view of human intellectual competencies he argues very boldly and uh, very uh, kind of effectively that we are all born with potential to develop a multiplicity of intelligence most of which have been overlooked in our testing society and all of which can be drawn upon to make us competent individuals the potential for musical accomplishments bodily mastery and spatial reasoning and and the capacities to understand ourselves as well as others are the multiple forms of intelligence that we must add to the conventional and typical tested logical and linguistic skills uh, which are long called by many of our society guys as the intelligence quotient so the multiple intelligence theory is that people possess nine different types of intelligences which are linguistic logical spatial musical kinesthetic interpersonal intrapersonal naturalistic and existential intelligence which we are going to discuss in a separate lecture in detail so with this we have now reached to the end of this lecture so let us summarize this particular lecture which is based on the theories of intelligence so basically the theories of intelligence try to explain the structural composition of our intelligence by pointing out specifically its different components or factors we have seen the unitary theory which is the oldest theory in this uh, in this particular discussion which we have, we have discussed uh, which holds that intelligence consists of only one single factor that is simply uh, a kind of intellectual co competency which is uh, which is universal for all the activities of the individuals so contrary to this we have seen the multifactor theory which insists that one's intelligence a person's intelligence consists of numerous separate elements or factors each one being a minute part or a basic component of an intellectual activity then we have seen a spearman's two factor theory which asserts that there are two types of factors working in uh, a person's intelligence which are named as general intelligence and specific intelligence then we have seen the group factor theory which advocates that our intelligence or our intelligence or our intellectual activities can be categorized into certain specific groups and each of these group is governed by a special type of intelligence uh, or a special type of component which is known as group factor then we have seen thurston's um and his associates theory which points there points out that there are nine such type of factors uh which are the constituents of a person's intelligence then um uh, we have seen the thurston sampling theory which tries to provide an uh, eclectic approach by giving place to general intelligence or small g and specific intelligence or small f s and group factor which is capital g in a person's intelligence we have seen vernon's hierarchical theory which was actually putting forward a hierarchical structure for explaining the structural composition of a person's intelligence in the shape of a, a factor which is g and it represents an overall intelligence of an individual branching into two major groups or group factors and various specific factors then we have seen gilford's theory uh, which was which was uh, given by gilford and uh, it provides us a model of intellect involving three interrelated basic parameters uh, which were operations then the content and the product 
and it explains the structural composition of human intelligence. It also says that there are 150 factors which are responsible for the human intelligence. Then we have seen uh, the other theories which are uh, which can be uh, denoted as the cognitive theories of intelligence and we have seen Cattell and Horn's theory of intelligence, Sternberg's uh, information processing theory and uh, Gardner's theory of uh, multiple intelligences which describe the mechanism of human intellect in, in this human intellect in terms of certain fundamental cognitive processes. Uh, in, this, uh, in this particular regard we can say that Cattell's and Horn's uh, theory of intelligence states that intelligence is made up of two types of uh, uh, basic intelligent factors or uh, uh, two types of intelligence are there. The first one is fluid intelligence and the second one is crystallized intelligence. Uh, the other theory uh, designated as Sternberg's information processing theory of intelligence makes use of the information processing approach for explaining the individual's cognitive or problem solving behavior. It outlines our mental functioning as definite steps explaining what we do with information from the time we perceive uh, that, that information till the time we finish using it to solve our problems. Then in brief, we just have uh, discuss the Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence, which challenges the notion of general intelligence, uh, on which most current models of intelligence uh, testing are based. It, uh, it actually defines intelligence as a set of abilities, talents, or mental skills that permit an individual to solve problems uh, or, or, or actually uh, make all those products that are cons uh, different consequences in a particular cultural setting. So this theory, while providing a very comprehensive view of the human cognitive structure, believes that there are uh, nine type of intelligences and uh, they range from linguistic to logical, mathematical, uh, to interpersonal, intrapersonal, kinesthetic, then naturalist and um, and then existential and all those. So all these were uh, the part of the multiple intelligences and uh, we are going to discuss this in detail. I hope that this, uh, this discussion would be useful for you all and I'll see you all in another discussion later on. Thank you so much. Dear students, you are watching a video on the major topic of intelligence and this lecture covered the theories of intelligence. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the national lockdown period for COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.